this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Necks. So glad you joined me again in another video. Um, I have made this ripped brim beanie that fits a man. <laughs> now we often hear in different Facebook groups that um, the circumference isn't wide enough, it doesn't fit a man's head. Um, what can I do? And uh, I have solved that problem for you, my friends. <laughs> I'm hanging out with this guy here so I can show you that um, this beanie will fit any man's head size. It really will because it's got a ribbed knit brim. Now, ribbed knit um, is very stretchy, so um, a very large head could fit underneath his hat. Now, this one, I, I made it so that it hugs the man's head because I had made one that had more, and I, I explained the row count in the video, but I made one um, that was about an inch and a half longer somewhere in there and um, and I put it on my husband it was the first one I made um, <laughs> to try to, to come up with the pattern and I made it and I gave it to my husband and said can you like try this on for me and uh, he put it on he said no it's way too slouchy so men like their their beanies to hug their head at least my husband does so that's what this one does this one hugs the head I bought this beautiful guy <laughs> in the States when I was there I also bought Karen no not Karen I said Karen because that's one of my favorite yarn brands. But this is Big Twist um, Value. Now becoming one of my favorite <laughs> yarn brands. I got this in, in the States and it is called Forest Green. And one ball will make this adult beanie plus a matching kids beanie, okay? And then there'll still be some left over. So um, all you're gonna need is one ball to make both of these beanies, okay? I don't have a kid's, um, a kid's mannequin to put this on head to put this on so um i can't show you that but it is um perfect size for um for a toddler um, and a young child it, it'll fit beautifully and uh then they can have matching beanies how sweet <laughs> but no i give you the measurements in the video and uh, tell you how to do it and yeah i hope that you enjoy this tutorial uh it is just a flat panel here, there's no fold up brim, but it looks like there is because of the rim knit on the bottom. I just love it. It turned out beautifully, and I was very pleased with the pattern. So I made, um, I, I went ahead to, I was gonna do it with just an, an adult man's beanie, but then I thought, no, I'm gonna do a kid's one too. So um, I'll show you both of these in the video. Um, I'll, we'll make this one together, and I'll give you measurements for this one together. Um, or is it the opposite? No, <laughs> that's how it is. Okay, and, um, yeah, and this is a four weight yarn, so uh, if you don't have the, the big twist, you can you can use whatever four weight yarn that you like to get the same measurement. Okay, so thanks again for joining me, my friends. Um, I'm going to uh, go put this little guy away, and this one too, <laughs> and um, we'll get started. All right, but before we get started, <laughs> I always forget something to tell you. I wanted to show you that this man's beanie will also fit a woman. Okay, so of course it will. We're gonna put it on and I'm gonna show you. And it fits snug to my head too, okay? And uh, it's perfect. So it's a little bit slouchier for me. There's a, there's a little bit there that um, wouldn't be there for the, for, for the man because they have a bigger head. Um, but this can be a mommy and me hat too, <laughs> okay? So this beanie is just versatile. Love the sizing of it um, and I think you will too. So, all right, now I'm done. <laughs> All right, so once you have your um, machine ready, we'll get started. But you know what? If you do not have the 48 Needle Central, use your 46 Needle Addy, and it will be just as beautiful. Let's um, bring our last pink and our first white in line with our yarn feeder. I make this white my first one. I just like that. I think it's got... If I, these numbers are so small, but this is actually 48 on your machine, but I make it as number one. Um, so if, if you have this as your number one, then this is how you're going to have your your um, needles. And if your counter is still working, that's probably what you're going to want to do. But I like to have the white as my first needle. Um, and then I color that divider, color that divider with a permanent black marker that's between those two. So I always see when my row is coming around. Okay. It makes it easier to count and easier to stop where I need to because um, my, my counter is broken. Okay. So we're going to go behind, take our working yarn. We do not need waste yarn. Go behind that first needle in front of the next, behind and in front all the way around okay just like this and cast on oops okay oh i gotta get some slack on my yarn ball it's a brand new ball 
Okay. And when it's in front of that last pink one, I'm going to slip it into my yarn feeder. Okay. Then I'm going to grab my row counter, which I use the Susan Bates finger counter. Um, and I just put it on like that. And then um, every time I pass the white key, the white needle, I click my row. Okay. That's how I count my rows. So I'm going to just hold this between my fingers like this. I'm going to use very light tension. I'm not really putting any tension on it. I'm just holding it so that I have even tension, okay? And then I'm going to knit. This is two. I'll click that until I get 45 rows, okay? Click my counter. That's three. Always the beginning of a ball. Takes a little bit extra time because you got to loosen it. So let me just take out a lot. Okay? So I clicked on three. That means I'm working on three. This is four, and I'm going to keep going around like that till I get 45 rows. Okay, so you go ahead and keep knitting just like this until you get 45 rows, and then I'll see you back. All right, my friends, we finished our 45 rows. Now we are going to rib. 10 rows so i i zoomed in the camera so you could see really well okay so we're going to rib 10 rows what we're going to do is we're going to knit the first needle it makes it easier to take it out of there that's the last needle okay of that last row we're going to knit that first needle then we're going to put this yarn end through um those two teeth just to hold that in place and we're going to purl this row so we're going to take the second one take that loop off your needle you're going to go around down 10 rows so unpick 10 rows one two always keep keeping your thumb and your finger pinching that um loop there because when you get to the 10th row unpicked you don't want it to go any farther okay so this is three four five six seven i'm going to just see if i'm in the camera eight nine ten and then i'm going to put my hook in that little loop let me just stand up here barely in the camera so I'm going to turn that down just like that so I've got my hook in that loop that 11th loop because I don't want to do un um pick that one I'm going to put my hook in from the bottom coming up then I'm going to grab that next that very first straight bar and put it through the loop on my hook that's one then I'm going to grab the next straight bar put it through the loop on my hook two Oops, 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 oops. Don't panic. You'll pick up that bar. Okay. And three. And four. And five. And six. And seven. Eight. Nine. Now, before you do the last one, you want to make sure that this is tight down here so that when you pick up on this um, last bar it sometimes will loosen this loop and pull it over those two teeth and then you will drop a row you don't want that so be um, aware of what's happening on this needle right here on these two teeth right here then you're going to finish that last bar then pop both of those underneath the dividers on both sides because then that will when you pull up on it to put it over the needle it won't pull that loop off the of the two teeth that are beside it okay because it puts the tension on underneath these two little bars so there you go so then we just um hooked that back on now we're going to put this working yarn under that divider knit that needle that we just did a pearl row of pearls then we're going to knit this next needle okay because that's going to be a straight knit then we're going to purl this next one so we're going to purl every other needle so let me just change my camera back up. We're going to unpick that. Okay. And then we're going to undo 10 rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is fun, actually. I really love to, to doing, doing this. 10. Then stick your loom hook in that loop so that you can grab your crochet hook put it in from bottom going up just like that okay and then we're going to go up grab that bar put it through the loop on your hook that's one bar two three four five 
six, seven, eight, nine. And then again, you're gonna watch this last one so that it doesn't um, take that loop off those teeth. Put these underneath the dividers before you pop it back over your needle, which is down pretty low, but that's okay. Back it up just a little bit. Go under that divider, knit that one, the row that you just did, and knit the next one, and then purl the next one. We're going to do that with every second needle. We're going to purl the row of every second needle. Let me do one more with you, okay? We're going to change our camera angle, okay? We're going to take it off the needle. We're gonna unpick one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Put your loom hook in that next loop. Then grab your crochet hook. I'm using a five millimeter. And then you're going to work it up. So that's the first bar into the loop on your hook. And then second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, nine, and that tenth one, being sure to keep your eye on this one because you don't want that loop to fall over those two pink teeth. Okay, then pop those down underneath both dividers, bring the loop over the needle and over those two pink teeth. Go under that divider so you can work this needle and work the next. We're gonna work this purl row. Then we're gonna do a straight row with the stocking at st stocking, how do you say that? Stocking at stitch, <laughs> regular mid stitch. Stocking at stitch, regular mid stitch there. Now we're gonna purl the next one. We're going to purl every second needle all the way around. So put a smile on your face <laughs> and enjoy the process because it does take, a, take some time, but friends, it'll be worth it in the end. So keep going and I'll see you when you get to the end of the row. All right, my sweet friends, we are done. This was my last um, ribbed one. So I have to put that underneath and I have to knit that last. Okay, now was that my last ribbed? So knit, rib, knit, rib. This was my last. <laughs> this was my last um, ribbed one, okay? So then I have to work that yarn underneath and uh, finish that off. But then I'm gonna put this underneath that divider and back into this yarn guide so that this first white needle can pick it up. So as we ran around and, and ribbed, that counted as our first row of the last 45 rows, okay? So now we have to do, I just bunged that up because I shouldn't have pushed it so far over, but you get the idea. We have to do 44 more rows, okay? So we're going to just straighten it now. So we did one that we did as we went around doing the ribbing, that was counted as one. Now we're gonna do 44 more, okay? So this is two, and three, and do 44 rows um, from that point, which means that you've done 45 rows of straighten it after your ribbing, and uh, once you get 44 more rows done now, I hope I'm not confusing you, including the ribbing um, that we have done, that one row that as we went around doing the ribbing, that counted as number one, we do 44 more for a total of 45 <laughs> of straighten it. So I'm gonna do 44 more rows like this and then I'll see you back. All right, so this is the end of my 45th row after my ribbing and I see that black marked divider coming around so I know I've got to put it in the middle of my yarn feeder right there and I am finished my row. Okay, so we've done 45 rows. Um, 44 after the ribbing and then we're going to cut off about a foot foot and a half maybe put that between the last pink the first white we're going to grab our needle that we used to remove where did it go I'll use this one I had the pink one that came with the center but I'll just grab this one because it's close okay we're going to work that last needle then we're going to start removing so you turn your handle take off a couple stitches to get some slack on this okay Keep rotating. Pick them up and hold them with your thumb on your needle. You can hold this one that's next to come off so it doesn't fall off the needles while you pull up on that. Okay. Then we're going to just keep going until we get all 48 stitches off the machine. Okay. 
So keep going in that manner. And I will see you when you are done. All right, so there we have it. We have our beautiful donut off the machine. We're going to unravel it. You can see our little knitted part right there. Um, doesn't look even because we have to stretch this out widthwise. And then it will look even. And lengthwise, line up those rows. Okay. Just like that. Then what we're gonna do, I had a dropped row there. Oh, here, look at this. See, friends, is that a dropped stitch? No, it's not. It's just it was, but I picked it up and it's still loose, okay? That's going to be the inside of my of my beanie. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to take the one end and we're going to cinch it closed. So just smoothing out the top there as you pull this. I'm going to cut this off because we don't need it quite so long. We're going to thread our needle, okay? And then we're going to just... Go around the very, oops, let me just straighten this out here. Go around the very top row of stitches and pick them up. Just like this with your needle, just to reinforce that end as we close it and then pull. You're going to go around the circle once, or twice if you feel you need to, but once is enough, I think. Okay. Go through that top row, give it a pull, smooth it out so you can get under that next section. Just like that. A little bit more. Okay, just like that, give it a little tug. Grab a couple strands there and tie a knot. Pull that down with your thumb. Then you're going to put your hand inside of your beanie. Put your needle through that center. I just am not trusting. <gasps> okay, we got a learning opportunity here. Yay, that was... I had to fix something and I, I didn't realize that it dropped off. I thought I had fixed it. Let me grab a crochet hook. This is an awesome opportunity to learn if you're new. If you're closing that and you realize one of your stitches dropped, okay, you just pick it up with your hook. Then you spread this out and you find those bars. Oh, I'm glad this happened actually because I love teaching moments. Then you pick up that first one, bring it through. Next one, bring it through. Next one, bring it through. Bring it through all the way up to the top. Okay, just like this. You never want this to happen, but it's just proof that you do not have to worry about it if it does. I'm going to then put my bobby pin in there, my stitch marker. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this needle. I'm going to go around the circle one more time until I get to that spot. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some stitches here. gonna go around and around and around see it happens to everybody so don't think that if it happens to you that uh you're the only person um it happens to all of us i don't care who you are you will make this mistake every once in a while <laughs> not very often do i make it but sometimes i do and there you go now i'm just going to put my yarn and through that little loop okay and then i'm going to continue around my merry way and I've got it, see, you can't even tell. We fixed it just like that, okay? So then let's go around to there, pull that, retie our knot. See, no need to panic, you can always fix it, okay? Then you're gonna put your hand into your beanie, put that needle in through the center, grab it on the other end with your finger so that you don't snag your, your work as you go down, pinch the top, we'll pull that through first, then pinch the top and bring it out to the other end, out through the other side, okay? And then you can pull that out so that that knot that you had on the end comes through, okay? Hi yeah, yeah. why am I having trouble? Trouble, trouble, trouble. Just grab the scissors and cut the thing off and be done with it. <laughs> Okay, so now that that is done, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to reinforce around that opening, just like what we did with the other part. You just um, pick up the stitches on the very first row there, or the last row, I guess, and, um, and you just close it up. 
Let's go around and around until it's tight, okay? And once it's tight, you tie a knot, just like you did on the other side, just to secure that, okay? Pull it down with your thumb, then you take your needle off, you take both ends, you wanna pull the inside one up as close to the outside one as you can, and then you're gonna tie a knot, being careful not to break your yarn, okay? I always do three at this point, okay? Okay, then you're going to put your yarn ends back on your needle, And you're going to hide them between the two layers. Okay, just like that. Pull on it, cut it, and it's hidden. There you go. So there you have it. Isn't that just so cute with that ribbed knitting? Now you stick with me because I'm going to give you the measurements for an adult beanie. So this one is eight across, um, and that's not stretched. Like when you rib, you have like Seriously, so much room there, okay? And it is eight and a half long. So eight and a half by, now that I stretched it, <laughs> let's get it all in its natural state there. Eight and a half by eight, okay? And stretches out to a lot wider than eight. So that's for our child's hat. Now I'm gonna show you the adult. So this particular hat is 100 rows in total, whereas the child's hat is 90 rows. And we only did, um, how many rows of ribbing did we do? Uh, we did 10 rows of ribbing, okay? So there's the difference. 10 rows of ribbing for the child's and 15 for the adult's. <laughs> Look at that, so much, so much niceness there. Me and my new words that I create, okay? Let's just uh, measure this adult one. So this one is nine and a half, okay, long. And let's see, unstretched, this is, well, unstretched is eight inches, which makes sense because it's the same size machine that I used. But again, this will stretch to seriously the widest man's head that you can find. <laughs> it will definitely stretch. That's the beauty of rib knit, okay? So to do this one, um, I started with 50 rows of straight knit. So this is the 50 rows for the inside, and that's just beautiful on that side too, if, you, if it's reversible and you don't want the ribbing to show. So I did 50 rows of straight knit. Then instead of doing 10 rows of ribbing like I do for the ch child's, I did 15 rows of, of rib knit, okay? Um, and then I did an extra 35 rows of straight knit. So 15 and 35, is 50 which matches the inside okay now you can adjust these sizes if you want to make the slouchy and want to make it bigger um you would let's just say you added um five rows to this side here so you did 55 here you would have to make sure that you had 55 on this side as total okay so if you do if you did 15 rows of ribbing here then you would have to do 40 rows here to make 55 so that both sides are even and you do the same if you want to decrease it and make it smaller okay so um you know smaller for the adult or for the kids so that is um that is what the adult one looks like all right i want to show you this one because this was the first one that i did <laughs> um when i was trying to learn uh how to do a rib knit brim um this was my first one that i that i practiced on to to figure out a pattern okay and so i did 110 rows um, my intent was to do it for a man okay and so i did um 55 rows of the solid on the inside okay and then i did 20 rows of ribbing okay and then i did uh 35 rows here so 35 and 20 is 55 and 55 just solid on the inside, okay? Um, but for this ribbing, I did two by two instead of one by one. On the other ones that we did that I showed you, um, we knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. This one, I knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, all the way around. And I did it for 20 rows. Um, and then I 
gave it to my husband to try on so he could see I could see how it fit and it was way too slouchy for him like I couldn't believe it 110 rows for man was way too slouchy um, men like to have their hats hug the top of their heads um, and so that's why um, I'm gonna keep this one because I like it um, but that's why I adjusted I thought 20 rows was too much I liked the the one by one ribbing better than the two by two ribbing I think that looks nicer too um, and this will be a slouchy beanie and I'll add a pom-pom to it and I'll wear it myself because I quite like it actually. Um, but I won't make another one with 20 rows because I'll just tell you I think it's too thick. Um, 15 is perfect for an adult, 10 is, per is perfect for a child. Okay, so this is what one that's 110 rows looks like. And it is um, 10 and a half inches long. So it's fairly long. All right, so I just wanted to show you that as well. But there you have it, our beautiful set, child and adult matching beanies. Um, just beautiful. I love it. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you um, learned something new with the ribbing. And because um, I certainly did, I had to figure this out and um, I just uh, am loving it. I love how it looks. I think it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. So you can add a pom-pom. You can just leave it like this. You can wear it the other way. So it's just a straight stocking net stitch and no ribbing. Um, just very, very versatile. So my friends, if you uh, watched this video and you liked it, please hit that like button, thumbs up, um, because uh, YouTube will then see that it's being watched and they will um, promote my videos to a further audience. So I would appreciate that so much. Um, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Come on over and join my Facebook group. I will have the link down below um, and you can um, click on that and come over and join. We'd love to have you a part of that group. And I'm going to just quickly mention one more thing. Um, I have another channel. It's called Storytime with Nana. I have um, close to 200 books on there already. I'm going to start adding on a very regular basis um, wholesome books that your kids will love and that you will be um, um, you know, assured that they are stories that, that um, are not scary. They're not controversial. They're just beautiful, well-loved kids' stories. I have almost 400,000 views on my books already, but I need the subscribers. So if you would please help, I'm almost there, but I need some help to get to 1,000 so I can get that channel monetized. Kids don't click on subscribe. <laughs> and when you're listening to, kid, to um, kids' books, you click on it for your child, but you don't um, think to subscribe either. So I'm asking that you, as my Koala Knits and Max family, if you have kids, um, Check out that channel. The link will be in the description box below. And please, please, please hit that subscribe button to help me out. I would appreciate it so much. So thanks again, my friends. I always enjoy spending time with you. And I would enjoy spending time with your children reading stories as well. So take care, my friends. Have the most awesome day. And God bless you all.